doing the first of kind of, I guess, a series, but it's called From Start, and it's going to be aperitifs or pre-meal drinks. And then at the end of the month, we'll be doing to finish, which will be DGSDs or after meal drinks. So aperitifs can be try to make one cocktail that could represent each category that I find to be the most commonly represented within aperitifs or aperitivos or pre-meal drinks or what have you. Um, but for those of you who don't know what those are, usually a pre-meal drink is something that's used to kind of spark your appetite, make you hungry or excited about the meal. And they can be, but not always. This is kind of a not a hard line rule, but for the most part, they tend to be a little drier, less sweet. Um, they also tend to be a little bit lighter, whether that's in flavor or in alcoholic content. And that's just because things like sugar and high alcohol contents really fill your stomach up, which isn't very helpful if I'm also trying to feed you. So the three categories that I figured we would go through today, we'll be doing something that's considered alcohol forward, even though it is alcohol forward, it would still be an aperitif because the ingredients in it aid with starting your digestive tract to really be hungry. We'll be doing a sour, which things that are sour and tart, as long as they're really nice, nicely balanced, they taste good, but also they help your mouth salivate. They indicate that something's happening to your brain and it just makes your mind and your body look for the next flavor. So sours are a great way to do an aperitif. And then we'll be doing kind of a take on a spritz. Spritzes were made very popular by Aperol. They're usually a lower ABV cocktail and they usually have like champagne and some kind of liqueur and we're going to kind of play around with that today. That being said, I am short a bottle. I'm going to let me get back. So this is my life, guys. I always forget one thing because I'm worried about something else, but I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, that's how you get your cardio. I ran up a flight of stairs, but now we have all the bottles necessary. I double checked this before I even got started. Such is my life. Ooh, okay, so let's talk about the alcohol forward cocktails. You may or may not have heard of something called a Negroni. Very, very famous, very, very classic, very disputed. There's lots of ways to make them. There are a ton of different recipes. There are usually, I want to say two schools of thought, but there could be more. Um, but usually the, the two schools of thought when it comes to preparing a Negroni is equal parts, meaning your recipe is composed of multiple ingredients, all in equal parts. Or you can have a recipe that's just built to adjust to the ingredients. So for example, a classic Negroni would be gin, Campari, and vermouth. So if it was equal parts, they might all be one ounce. But if you were from the other line of thinking, then it might be an ounce and a half of gin. And then the other two elements would be in varying amounts until it adjusted to the flavor profile that you like. Personally, I'm a big equal parts gal. That being said, I'm an equal parts gal for non-traditional Negronis. Not a huge fan of Campari. Um, I have had it a few times and enjoyed it, but it is definitely not my go-to. So I'm gonna share a Negroni variation, if you will, that I'm calling the jump off. So you'll need a mixing glass, and this will be an all equal parts cocktail. So I'll be starting with gin. We'll use one whole ounce. Right there, I'll lay the top, pour that in. And then I'll be using Aperol instead of Campari. Campari is very grapefruit forward, whereas Aperol is more orange. Um, in flavor profile, and it's a little bit softer, a tad bit sweeter, um, but not so much that it's going to ruin your appetite. So a whole ounce of that. And Campari and Aperol have in common that they have this beautiful color to them. One is a little more red, this one's a little more orange, but they are beautiful, and any cocktail they get put into is equally gorgeous. And then the last ingredient we'll be using is an Amontillado style sherry which is a sherry that's a little bit drier. Um, it's not full dry, but it's definitely not sweet. 
And then it's a little bit nutty as well. He has guests. I love having guests in the house. So we're going to put one ounce of that also directly into my mixing glass. I'm going to go ahead and pin my camera. All right. So once you have all three ingredients in your mixing glass, you're going to just go ahead and add ice. This is a stirred, a stirred cocktail. So if you don't have one of my fancy little cocktail spoons at home, you can absolutely use a chopping, a chopping stick, a chopstick. That is usually the easiest way to do this. But just to recap, how do you stir a cocktail? You take the concave part of your spoon, you put it inside your mixing glass, insert it down, and just kind of trace the inside of the glass. The first few times you do it, it'll always feel a little weird. Um, just because it's a little different than stirring, say, pasta sauce, <laughs> or maybe your milk and your coffee. But once you get the hang of it, it becomes a very natural motion. And you'll see that it's mostly in my wrist, my shoulder, and my elbow don't move all that much. But you want to stir for about 20 to 30 seconds. And that's just so that you get a really nice mouthfeel and that the cocktail is properly diluted. So once we have that, I'm going to take a rocks glass and then a larger format ice cube that I made with one of those like one by one inch um, ice cube tray. I'm going to go ahead and strain that directly over to this really pretty orange color. And Negronis traditionally have an orange garden. Some people prefer to just use the peel, some prefer the entire fruit. I personally love putting the entire slice of orange in there, it soaks up all those flavors. And it's really tasty treat afterwards. But in the interest of contrast today, my garnish is just going to be a lemon wheel. Real simple. Slide it in like that. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Mm -mm -mm. So it's fruity, it's lightly floral, it's very light and refreshing, even though it's got all those different juices in there. This just tastes like it could go. On its own, it would go really well with a salad. If you're doing something small to start, this is a great pairing. Yeah, it's very tasty. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on, we're going to make a sour. And sours traditionally are 99% of the time a shaken cocktail. And that's just because citrus juices benefit greatly with a lot of aeration. So you will need a shaker. And this one's gonna be tequila based. Now, even though I'm making a sour, I could make a daiquiri, I could make a whiskey sour, and technically those would be sours, but I wouldn't really qualify those as an aperitif because the alcohol content on those is usually pretty heavy. So to counteract that, instead of using a full two ounce pour of a harder liquor like tequila, whiskey, gin, I decided to do something called a split base, which you're gonna see me do for both of the next cocktails. So what that means is if I have a two ounce pour that I want to use, I'm going to take one ounce and make it the harder liquor and then one ounce and make it a lighter liquor. So in this case, I'm going to use one ounce of a silver tequila. I'm going to pour that into my shaker tin. And then I'm going to use the bottle that I ran all the way downstairs to get. <laughs> I'm going to use one ounce of dry vermouth. Put that in. And so that's my lower ABV. That's the tequila. This one comes in at, I think, 40. I'm not entirely sure right now. I can't read. Um, but yes, usually tequila is at about 40. And then this is at 18%. So it's a very significant difference. So one and one. And then I'm going to use a half ounce of ruby red grapefruit juice. And then I'm going to use a quarter ounce of agave syrup. And now a lot of sours will usually have lemon and lime. Grapefruit's really nice. It's a little harder to mix with because that acidity isn't there. But vermouth is really nice, especially a dry vermouth like this one. It'll have a little bit of acidity. It'll also have a tad of sweetness. So I'm able to dial back the amount of sweetness I would traditionally put in a sour. And I'm able to change the citrus for something a little bit different. In this case, the grapefruit. So I'm going to add some ice. All right, so you want to shake it 
for about 10 to 15 seconds, just kind of depends on your ice. I'm using standard ice from like my fridge. So I usually do about 10 to 15. I have a coop and I'm going to go ahead and strain directly into my glass. And this is what I call a fresh start. I'm going to be garnishing this with a grapefruit wheel that is much larger than my glass because I found a massive grapefruit hands. Grapefruit is huge. There you go, guys. Look at that. It's pretty and pink. What would that be a good name, too? Pretty and pink. Mm. So this is also really nice. Really, really subtle. It tastes like something you could totally get away with drinking in the morning. Um, your choice of vermouth and your choice of tequila are going to be vital. If you choose, like this tequila is a little bit more vegetal and strong in flavor. It's definitely a little more nuanced than say maybe a lower shelf tequila. And then your vermouths are wildly different across the board, whether they're Italian, whether they're French, it's like wine. They're all different. Vermouth is a type of wine. So the botanicals and the flavoring agents that they use and whatever vermouth you pick are really gonna alter the cocktail because there's only so many ingredients that are in here. So every single one of them matters. You choose widely, but make the cocktail anyway. <laughs> and last but not least, we are going to make what I'm calling an open invitation. And this is going to be a spritz. So traditionally spritzes are built in the glass. And what that means is you don't use a shaker, you don't use a mixing glass, you literally pour all of these ingredients into a glass. And I'm a really big fan of the traditional Aperol spritz recipe, um, mainly because of the way they build it. So if you ever have a bottle handy, the recipe is actually on the back. So it'll tell you um, to fill a glass with ice, combine Prosecco, Aperol in equal parts and a splash of soda, but if you look on their website, um, and most Italians that I've ever talked to or worked with, they always say to follow the three, two, one rule. So it's a three, two, one rule, and you have to imagine that you're taking whatever your spirit is and putting it to bed. So you lay your ice, and that's your bed. And then you put in your three ounces of Prosecco, if you're making a traditional one, that would be like your sheet and your pillow. And then you take your spirit in the place of an Aperol spritz, it would be Aperol, and you lay it in bed. And then you top it off with one ounce of soda, that would be like your blanket. So three of Prosecco, two of Aperol, one of soda. So I'm kind of following that tradition, but using different ingredients. So I have this glass that I've already kind of garnished, and that's got a bunch of poppy seeds on it. Um, and that's mainly because poppy seeds are one of the ingredients and one of the liqueurs that I'll be using. So I'm gonna put ice in my glass. <laughs> Pebble ice because I can, and it's amazing. All the pebble ice. I love pebble ice, guys. It's the same thing. Okay, so here we go. We're going to use three ounces of a dry apple cider or dry cider. This one's local to Texas, but you could use any kind you want. That being said, most of the ones on the market, like off the top of my head, like Angry Orchard, way too sweet way too sweet. So if you don't have access to a dry cider, you can use a light beer, you can use a brute champagne, or you can just absolutely sub out the entire um, cider for soda if you want an even lighter beverage. So it's one and a half, and then I'm gonna do one and a half more, bring it open to three. And we're using dry, again, because aperitif, we wanna stay away from that sweetness so that we're still hungry. I've got three in there. And then I'm going to use a split base again. I'm going to use ooh, this glass might not hold it. I think I put a little too much ice in it. Let's just take some of this. How about ice takes up a lot of space? It is so, so tasty and great, but it takes up a lot of space. That's how this works, guys. All right. So we're going to use a split base of vermouth and ginger Jaeger. So it's been a minute since I've used that on the show uh, or on this channel. Um, so it's dry white vermouth and then Jaeger makes a Jaeger called hot ginger or sharf. Um, not a huge proponent for Jaeger. Um, their classic presentation is probably my, not my favorite, but this one is actually really, really good. Um, so I'm gonna use one ounce of that. And this is where that poppy seed garnish was inspired. So one of the ingredients in Jaeger happens to be poppy seeds. 
Um, also chamomile, so if you have access to little manzanilla flowers or chamomile flowers, you could absolutely use those. And then I'm going to top off with one ounce of soda. I don't know what this looks like. Guys. All right. So as you can see, I built that in the glass. And then on just a personal note, you can absolutely serve it like this, but I like to give it a stir. And the proper way to stir a cocktail like this is to do something called a lift, where you take your spoon, insert it, give it kind of a flick of the wrist, and just lift the spoon up. You definitely don't want to aggressively stir the cocktail because you want to protect the bubbles at all costs. Yeah, a couple times, four or five times should be good, should be all stirred. And that, guys, is an open invitation to drink a lot more aperitifs and enjoy your meal afterwards. Oh my God, so much. Mm. So this is surprisingly, surprisingly light tasting. This is one of those drinks that someone could serve it to you and you may not think there's alcohol in there because the flavors we're working with are really, really subtle. So the cider not being overly sweet doesn't taste a lot like juice. This just tastes like a really light, refreshing soda. Um, so it is really, really nice, but it is also very sneaky. Aperitifs are not meant for day drinking or binging or you know, just continuing to drink like this all day. They're specifically designed to increase your appetite and pair with possibly the first part of your meal. So please explore. If you would like to learn more about classic aperitifs, I can absolutely send you guys to websites, send you guys recipes um, for all of these. Um, and then classic ones that you would find maybe on a more traditional menu. But that is what I have for you guys today. My absolute apologies to anyone who was hoping to watch the recording from last week. We had that whole audio snafu, but all the recipes are on the Instagram account. And as usual, all these recipes get uploaded to the at Pandemic Pinup um, Instagram account. And highly encourage everybody to follow me over on Pandemic Pinup at TikTok. Um, I'll be doing a giveaway later this month, and I'm really excited about it. But it'll be specifically for people supporting me in my social media needs to try to help grow my brand. But thank you as always for stopping by and I will see you all next time. Cheers.